the most reasonable conclusion was that, in fact, a tornado hit the bridge. An engineering marvel, the Kinzu Bridge met its match at the hands of Mother Nature on July 21st, 2003. But how did a steel viaduct, which once carried passengers and heavy locomotives, twist and collapse during a summer thunderstorm? That's what a team of meteorologists and engineers sought to investigate in the days and months following the disaster. It was a seasonably warm and humid day on July 21st, 2003. Temperatures in McKean County were in the upper 70s to near 80 degrees, and it was muggy. The high humidity and the lowest levels of the atmosphere, combined with relatively cold air aloft and large wind shear, which is changing wind speed with height, made conditions favorable for thunderstorms to develop. By 3.20 p.m., a storm tore through Kinzu Bridge State Park, ripping hundreds of trees out by the roots and knocking down 11 of the bridge's 20 towers in less than a minute. But it was unclear if a tornado was the culprit from an initial look at radar. Mainly this involved looking at the WSR 88D data, looking for signs of a tornado parent circulation. Unfortunately, given the range between the events and the radar, there was no chance to resolve the tornado in the radar data. Really all you could do is see if there was one of these parent circulations called a mesocyclone. And indeed, there was. And in some respects, it was like an inland hurricane. If you look at the radar imagery, there was a large scale counterclockwise swirl to a lot of the individual thunderstorms that comprised this convective system. And if you trace back the origins of the convective system, it had gone across Ohio and then Pennsylvania, eventually New York over a period of days. Its origins were actually a large complex of thunderstorms days earlier. So it has a lot of similarity with hurricanes where all of the heating uh, that's given off by lots of individual updrafts in the thunderstorms, that actually can feed back and allow for the formation of a longer lived system that takes on basically an entity of its own and becomes self propagating and self-perpetuating. Engineers would later confirm that winds gaining in speed hit the bridge in three different directions, lifting the towers from their concrete foundations and throwing them to the ground. It happened so quickly with heavy rainfall and debris flying through the air that no one witnessed the actual collapse of the bridge. Construction workers who were in the process of refurbishing the bridge, along with park workers, took shelter as trees fell recounting blowing debris and a guard shack lifted off the ground. After the storm passed and the dust and debris had settled, locals began to assess the damage. It made their way through the trees and said the bridge blew over. We heard that it had fallen, but we couldn't see it or prove it. And the morning paper came out and took a picture. So the picture that was in the paper the next day showed the big gap and the bridge was gone. Only nine of the original towers were left standing. Based on the damage, the tornado was given a rating of F1 on the original Fujita scale, with winds estimated near 100 miles per hour. But how could such a low-end tornado topple a steel structure taller than the Brooklyn Bridge? The post-collapse inspection revealed the Achilles heel for the Kinzu Bridge. The original 1882 wrought iron had been replaced with steel in 1900, except for the anchor bolts, which were simply reinforced with collar couplings. The investigation determined that hidden fractures had developed in these collar coupling assemblies and anchor bolts, making them too weak to withstand the winds of even a low-end tornado 103 years later. Following the destruction of the Kinzu Bridge in 2003, the decision was made to leave this graveyard of iron, steel, and concrete as a testament to the true power of Mother Nature. That decision forever changed the local ecology. And you know, people were like, oh, thousands of deer must have died. Probably no deer died in that, you know, or, or, or a very rare deer here and there where a tree would actually hit it. But the effect was the next day the deer had tons more food to eat because all these treetops were available to them, you know. So it's, it's, there's a lot of interesting perspectives to a big windstorm and, and what grows back in the woods after it. So. In the aftermath, Mother Nature has healed. Hardwood forests of black cherry, sugar maples, and eastern hemlock have all returned. Areas where swaths of mature trees were blown down during the tornado now contain a greater diversity of wildlife habitat for black bear, ruffed grouse, snowshoe hares, and more. 
After the storm that forever changed this landmark, it was time for a new chapter, a reinvention of what remained of the Kinzu Bridge and the state park it resides in. Six of the remaining towers that had already undergone restoration work prior to the storm were reimagined into the Kinzu Skywalk, billed as one of the top 10 most beautiful skywalks in the world following its opening in 2011. Visitors from all over the Commonwealth, country, and world can walk out 624 feet, 225 feet up along the tracks across the sky and get a 360 degree view of the Kinzu Gorge, just as folks have been doing for over 140 years. We'll continue to look at how the legacy of the Kinzu Bridge outlives a tornado that some will never forget. For Weather World, I'm Rob Leidick.